a very good morning to all of you today we are going to start the first class of our fifth semester let's start with akin narayan's mars in the seventh house a chapter from his memoir my days it was issued to mark the birth centenary of the author uh, during 2006 after his death and with rare photographs of narayan and brilliant sketches by his brother ak lakshman the famous cartoonist uh, the book is a remarkable one now it's a very short introduction of ak narayan uh, you can see ak narayan he is ak narayan 1906 to 2001 Rashipuram Krishna Swami Iyer that is his full name a pioneer of indian literature he was born in madras british india into a brahmin family on 10th october 1906 narayan along with mulkaraj anand and R. raja rao constitutes the trio of the indian english novel they are the beginners they are the first indian english novelists he created the fictional south indian town called malguni that you all are fam- uh, known everybody knows this malguni days in which uh, his works are set up all his characters come and go thus he is compared to william faulkner who also created a fictional land like him and also they are compared uh, because their style of writing the simplicity the way they portray the local lives they are similar he highlights the social context and everyday life of his characters so we can see the very indian lives in his novels and short stories short stories are compared with his short stories are also compared with guy de maupassant a french uh, author novelist short uh, story writer because of his ability to compress a narrative because uh, he, without expanding much he can tell a story these are the major works of ak narayan he actually devoted his life completely in writing he was working as a master in some schools after completing his degree but um, he was asked by the uh, headmaster to attend others classes also so he has decided to write because he has this he was a voracious reader and he started writing at the early age of uh, 12 years old he started scribbling down and he wanted to write so he realized uh, being a teacher being working somewhere he will not be able to write so he devoted all his time to writing and his friendship with the british author graham green helped him to publish his uh, first work swami and friends uh, that uh, received much uh, rejections on first from various publishers actually uh, graham green helped him to come to the after uh, this publication he became very famous and there was no need to turn back uh, all the novels after that became very popular and he also became a very wanted writer so this is his first work swami and friends 1935 all this life uh, we are going to discuss in this part we are going to study uh, mars in the seventh house you can see the progress of his writing throughout the years the bachelor of arts in 1937 dark room 1938 malgudi days 
the english teacher 1947 and the financial expert 1951 the guide 1956 actually this is the very famous work uh, for which he has received sahitya academy award and also this has been made into a major film which uh, for which he has received film fair award too and the man eater of malgudi god demons and others 1964 winters of seeds 1967 a horse and two goats 1970 the painter of science 1977 the emerald root 1980 a tiger of malgudi 1983 talkative man 1986 the word of nagraj 1990 grandmother's tale which is the last novel that he has written 1994 so he has never stopped working uh, all his life he has been writing and some of the writing styles he takes the lives of ordinary people in india in most of his works and we can see it with uh, the tinge of uh, humor this is natural in his all writing when you read swami in prints there are so many hu hum funny elements that we have all experienced in our childhood like playing on a paper board and all this jealousy all this little funniest things that we have done so he has understood the psychology of children he knows how india the locals are especially in madras and Uh, simplicity that is uh, that is why he has been compared to compared with um, faulkner along with the trends and fashions in fiction writing it is not that he has only written in simple uh, style he has uh, experimented with some of the fictional british uh, style also and we can say tamil overtones in english like uh, while he describes he includes tamil words to make it very local very indian in the sense and he is compared as, uh, with chekhov and in chekhov um, for his storytelling he is called as indian chekhov chekhov is a very sentimental emotional story writer like that he also does a famous um, pulitzer prize winner jamba lahiri talks about narayan like narayan provides a reader something novelist struggles to achieve in 100 more pages so like very um, precise form he can he is able to express emotions and sentiments of people compared him with o henry and she also compared him with o henry frank o'connor flandry o'connor they are all excellent storytellers and uh, his writings his stories are more descriptive and less analytic and it is objective and as an author he is detached from these descriptions and that makes a very real kind of narration very realistic narration and so many ordinary events that uh, happens in our daily life so when we read akya narayan's novels we find it with we connect it with ourselves or we find it a neighborhood experience so that connection is uh, established by him ordinary events to create a connection in the minds of readers so readers could really connect with this writers and some of the critics uh, said these things about akenara unflinchingly traditional outlook between kero that we have been discussing this traditional what is happening in the locality that is being portrayed in his uh, novels or stories 
Arke Narayan is delightfully conscious of the disappearance of the caste system. O.P. Mathur. Arke Narayan was made to work in a newspaper which was uh, against, it, which was anti-Brahmin. Being a Brahmin too, he was able to work for that paper. So, uh, uh, Arke Narayan is delightfully conscious of the disappearance of the caste system. Few Indians have been more truly Indian. Siri Narasim Haya told that Arke Narayan was truly an Indian. In all his novels, we can see the very Indian spirit, Indianness. So, um, few Indians have been more truly Indian. And there uh, was a write-up in Outlook India by uh, Shashi Deshpande. And she said this, Pave the ways. Yes, Narayan did that by writing about ordinary men and women, by translating the Indian experience into English, by doing it so easily, comfortably, and without any affectation whatsoever, that it seemed enormously simple. But it's never simple. Only a writer knows how difficult this is. And it's because of what he did that it is possible for all the writers who followed to travel more comfortably. The road had been paved to a certain extent. As a writer, I admire this almost invisible achievement. As a writer, I admire him too for the fact that while his contemporaries seemed dated, that while they have been relegated to the back shelves, he is still read and enjoyed. I envy him for his large and dedicated readership all over the world. A readership that consists of ordinary readers as well as academics, critics and writers of acclaim. This has been said by Shashi Deshpande. It is for sure because um, even in 21st century, he is being read by people and enjoyed by people. They connect with his stories. So that is a simplicity that he brings forward. We are going to study about, uh, study a novel, a portion of a novel, which uh, it is not a novel, it's a memoir, an autobiography, uh, which he has, which was unfinished and later got published. So this is about Arke Narayan and um, he has received these awards, Sahitya Academy Award for the Guide 1958, Filmfare Award uh, for making the Guide a film and Padma Bhushan 1964, E.C. Benton Medal, 82 he was elected as an honorary member of the American Academy of Arts and Letters. He has also received honorary doctorates by University of Leeds, University of Mysore, University of Len uh, sorry, Delhi University. And towards the end of his career, Narayan was nominated to the upper house of the Indian Parliament for a six-year term starting in 19 18 1989 for his contributions to the Indian literature. And he has received uh, a few months before, a year before his death, India's second highest civilian honor, that is the Padma Vibhushan in 2000. And he died in 2001. So this is about Akhil Narayan. Thank you for listening. Thank you.